Welcome to the Living Sephardic Heritage Series. One of the greatest Chachamim to live within the last 30 years that was that Mamash held up the world of the Sephardic Jewry was Rav Ben Tzion Abba Shaul. What can we say about Rav Ben Tzion Abba Shaul? He was the Chavruta, the uh, learning partner of Rav Adya Yosef. They were actually in the same class together, a giant, the Rosh Hashiva of Porat Yosef. Many stories have been said about him. Not only was he fluent in Gemara, Tosfot, Rishonim, Rashi, he was also a master Kabbalist. He even had a secret yeshiva that many people didn't know about called Emet V'Shalom. To talk about him, just a couple of stories. When he was a young boy, his father was a very regular man. His name was Eliyahu, Eliyahu Abba Shaul. They were immigrants from Persia. As a young boy, his father was, he worked as a shoemaker. But business wasn't going good, and uh, he decided to open up a vegetable shop with a partner. To say the least, the business went down the drain. And he, he, he had 16 children, uh, Ben Sion being one of the youngest, and they were very observant, very strictly observant. Uh, and the young Ben Sion was very sick. And they didn't have any money. There was no insurance back then. The, they didn't have money to take him to the doctor. Story goes that his mother, his mother's name was Benaya. She was crying and she fell asleep from crying. And in her dream, she sees the Ben Ishchai. And the Ben Ishchai, or Ben Yosef Chaim in Baghdad, tells her, stop crying. The young boy, Ben Sion, is going to be one day one of the greatest Sephardic Chachamim to ever walk the earth. He's going to be or Litzion, a light Litzion. And here is the sign. And when you're going to wake up, open your purse, you're going to find a golden coin. And I want you to go. There's going to be a Brit Milah and Shul the next morning. After, when you go to the Brit, take the water that the Mohel washes the knife with. Take that water and rub it on the baby. And you're going to see he's going to get better without going to the doctor. She woke up from her dream. Right away, she ran to her purse. She opened it up and she sees a gold coin. Where did it come from? How did it get there? She gets dressed, she goes to the shul, and really there was a Brit going on over there. She waits till the end of the Brit, she takes the water, rubs it on the baby, the baby gets better, no fever, nothing. He didn't need antibiotics. When her husband comes home from work, she shows him the golden coin, and he says, let's buy food with it. She says, why would we waste this? Is a, something special within this coin. Let's put it as a down payment for a rent for a shop. Open up your own shoe store. And he ended up opening up his own shoe store and became one of the most famous shoe stores in uh, Shkunat HaBukharim, where they used to live in Yerushalayim, in the old quarter. Rav Ben Tzion, as a young boy growing up, everyone knew he was destined for greatness. They didn't know from his sharp mind. Many sharp children, they knew from his characteristics, his midot. They once say about him when he was a young boy walking, Back then, they, they were still the milkman. He would go to the dairy farm, collect the milk in metal cartons, and he would drop off the milk in everyone's houses the next day. They once said that they once saw the young Ben Sion walking outside, and, he, and they see him standing by the milkman's donkey with a plate of milk. They asked him, what are you doing? He said, I'm doing the biggest mitzvah. What's the biggest mitzvah? Hashava Saveda. Shabbos Aveda, what happened? He says, you see the milk carton? It has a... It's dripping. It's baltashchist. Chaval, the young boy said. It is. These young... These, these small pieces of... These uh, small drops of milk going to waste. It's money. While they're talking and he's holding the bowl of milk the milk shouldn't spill over. These drops, the chalban, the milk man says, what are you doing, boy? Go back to yeshiva. He says, what do you mean? I'm doing a mitzvah of Shabbat Aveda. What? Nonsense. Little drops of milk. So he tells back, he says, even these small drops of milk is considered money. And even this is worth something, which is reminiscent of our great father, forefather Yaakov Avinu, when he went back to get those small jars. He was destined for greatness. But when his father tried to enroll him back then in Yeshivat Porat Yosef, that was the great famous Sephardic Yeshiva, pre the Jordanian War, 1967, Rav Ben Tzion Chazan told the father of Eliyahu that the Yeshiva was full, they weren't accepting anyone anymore. The father was very, it's, it's a very hurtful thing when a parent hears 
This child is not accepted to a yeshiva. It's too full, it's too this, it's too that. Later on, when Rav Ben Sion himself becomes Rosh Yeshiva, his policy was to never throw away a child from yeshiva, to accept everyone's yeshiva. And he was one of the most successful heads of the yeshivas. Unfortunately, our days, it's a bit different. So, Rav Ben Sion Chazan, who was the student of the Ben Ishai, tells Rav Eliyahu about Shosor, we can't accept the young Ben Sion. And he left Bepache Nefesh. He was very distraught. On the way out, he sees his old friend from Shul. He tells him, his name was Rav Maimoni. He tells him, why are you so sad? He said, my, my son wasn't accepted to Yeshiva. He said, nonsense. I'm going to go and make sure your son gets accepted. Real chivalry. And he goes inside Rav Ben Sion Chazan's room. He was the menahel of the Yeshiva. He knocks at the door. He says, how could you not take this boy inside Yeshiva? This young boy is destined for greatness. Give him a half a year trial. See if, you're not, see if I'm not mistaken. And Rav Ben Sion Chazan accepted him as a Talmud. And trust me, he, wasn't, he never regretted the decision. Because one day Rav Ben Sion himself would become the famous Rosh Yeshiva of Porat Yosef. Rav Ben Sion uh, Abba Shaul, he went through a very tough life. He had only had one son, which he named after his father, and this was after 10 miscarriages. 10 miscarriages. His wife and he himself, when people used to come to him for blessings, his blessings would never... They would always be fulfilled. So they once asked him, Rebbe, how come you're... Bless yourself, help yourself. He said, A person in jail cannot free himself. And he suffered a lot for the kalab and for the prat. You know what it is, 10 miscarriages? He was such an anav, so humble, unbelievably humble. They once say a famous story. He was walking down the old quarter of Jerusalem to the yeshiva. And a bus driver, a secular man who doesn't know who he was, takes a smart tooth, a cloth, a cleaning cloth, one of those dirty cleaning cloths, and he throws it to the Rosh Yeshiva. Bizayon tells him, clean the windows with me, man. What do you think Rav Ben Zion did? Without a second thought, he jumped on top of the bus like he was a young man and started cleaning the windows. His students were coming by and says, Rebbe, what are you doing? He says, what do you think? It's beneath me to help another Jew do mitzvah chesed. That was Rav Ben Zion Abba Shaul. Every morning, he used to give a shear for four hours. Four hours. His, his famous morning lectures. And they said after he used to finish his shear, his students once asked him, Rebbe, how do you remember? Every Tosfot, every Maharsha, every Maharshal, every Hagah, every Ramah, every Shulchan Aruch, every Bet Yosef. So he quoted them Rav Moshe Feinstein. Rav Moshe Feinstein used to say, if a person saw an elephant flying, would he ever forget it? So Rav Ben Zion said, every piece of Gemara, every piece of Tosfot is like a new wonder to me. How could I ever forget it? I wasn't blessed with a memory. I was blessed with a Hitlahavut, an excitement when it came to Torah. And that made me not, never forget anything. I want to tell you one small story that many people know, but Rav Ben Sion Abba Shaul, the great Sephardic luminary, the Baal Orlet Sion, anyone who learns his books, especially his Chelek Aleph that was printed in his lifetime, could see the sharpness, the chitushim, the, the novelty in his, in his learning. That's besides the fact that he was a very famous Mekubal. Rav Ben Sion, one time he was teaching his students and they were going back and forth on a Gemara. And a certain part of a Gemara, where there was a big argument between two Achronim, two later rabbis, one called the Maharsha, and one called the Maharshal. And he tells his students, well, the Maharsha asks a very tough question on the Maharshal of Shlomo Luria. But you know, it's easily answered. And the student says, no, what are you talking about? They're going back and forth for four hours, each one trying to prove his position. At the end of the lecture, they both sides agreed that the Maharshal was right. When they learned the Gemara from the beginning again, both sides agreed that the Maharshal was right and the question of the Maharsha was not a question. At that moment, they saw tears coming down their Rebbe's eyes. They said, Rebbe, what's wrong? He said, this has been the first time in 200 years somebody has proven that the Gemara could go according to the Maharshal. It's a etratzon in Shamaim. It's a, it's a moment of will in heaven. Say names for Rufu Shalema. Pray right now. And they saw their Rebbe crying. So was the Ruach HaKodesh of Ben Sion Abba Shaul. He 
passed away at the, way, at the age of 73 after a very long illness of 15 years. He had a stroke. Uh, half of his body was paralyzed. What can I say? The Yasurim he went through and the love he gave his children, never throwing a person out of yesh- a child out of Yeshiva Talmud, never not accepting anyone, always teaching. He had so many lucrative positions offered to him, but he never left the Yeshiva. He was the mom, he was he was Rabbi Vadi Yosef's uh, neighbor. And also the teacher of his son, Rabbi Yaakov Yosef. May his merit protect us. I remember as a young, many moons ago, I went to Eretz Yisrael to take a test for one of the smichas that we went, me and a couple of friends. And we were davening by the grave of Rabbi Yosef. And suddenly we hear crying, crying. We go see where the crying is. And we see somebody with a long top, with a big top hat and a long coat, look like a Rosh Hashiva, praying by the grave of Ben Tzion Abba Shaul. And he's saying, oh, Rebbe, where are you? I miss you, Rebbe. Those were the Talmidim of Ben Tzion Abba Shaul. Those were the tears of the students of Ben Tzion Abba Shaul. Chaval al da'avdin v'lam shtakichin. May we see him speedily our days in Tchia Samesim. Baruch Adonai le'olam. Amen v'amen. Thank you very much.